Welcome back, everybody, to the Vulcan Deckmasters Week 3, Day Number 1 broadcast. Upcoming, we have Strifeco versus Nyria. Once again, I'm joined by Amaz, uh, who had to stop real quick and gets his lunch. Are you all well fed? No, 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 no. The lunch didn't arrive yet. <laughs> oh, it didn't arrive yet. Well, no, no, no. Maybe, maybe the series is over and then it'll come. Yeah, hopefully. That'll be nice. Uh, yes. We'll see. Because all the Archon guys in the house right now are either sleeping or streaming. Um, so, oh well. We'll just leave them be. Cool, cool. You guys must have like an insanely powerful internet if everyone's like streaming at the same time and being able to. You, I just hope that you don't crash or disconnect or anything. Oh no, 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 we don't crash. If if uh if we crash, then someone else is crashing along with me. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, <laughs> one one giant lifeboat for everybody. Yeah. Um, hi, how you doing? By the way, hanging out in the Archon house. How much longer are you gonna stay there? Sometimes it's. Like weird to see you there, um, you know, with with all of your laundry hanging behind you versus the normal set that we used to see back in Hong Kong. Oh, yeah, um, it's actually okay. Like the room is fine. Like, people think I'm homeless and whatnot. I'm fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna be here until WCA, I think, uh, the China um, event that is going to be in around September, I think. And then I'll be back to Hong Kong, and then it's gonna be BlizzCon. So I get to see you again, BlizzCon, right? Yeah, yeah, it's only a few months away. I know some people might be feeling like, wow, BlizzCon is end of the year, but it is coming up in about four months. And that's and the window of closing in points is also starting to draw near where uh, I'm actually pretty high up there for North America. I think you're in, at least in the top 10 or maybe are you top five? I think I'm third place right now. With one yeah, six. yeah. So, so you're like, really high up there in points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Farming, farming those points, man. And yep. uh, wait, did, do you have enough points to go to the last call at least? No, I have no points. Man, you can win the <laughs> I, whole I actually, thing, I, right? Maybe I should try pushing for it. Um, maybe because, like, I don't know, the freeze mage thing that was pretty good. Like, you know, you actually really good at the game for then. But I guess uh, you need it for casting, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. If, uh, if I'm playing, <laughs> it's going to cast, right? No, we're just going to have to pull every player who didn't make it to cast. That's I mean, game. that's why you, you know, kind of dyed your hair too for casting. Mm -hmm. Just just to impress all the viewers, for sure. Yeah. Impress a girl, um, right? Yes, impress the girl viewers. That's that's primarily the concern. The reason why I bring up points is because the Vulcan Deckmasters is awarding points, by the way. Oh! Like points to the winner. That was the transition point. Very good segue there. Not bad. And so that's why it's important for these guys to get to the playoffs. Not just for the money, but for the points, because we only have about two months remaining before points get cut off. You can't oh, yeah. earn any more points after September, I believe, because October is regionals. September, October are regionals, and then uh, Worlds Wait, are... Wait, really? Whatever. From what I know, August is actually the last month that counts for points in the ladder. Yeah, so we have the full month of July and the full month of August. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no Septembers, you know, so... That, that, sorry, that's what I meant. Like, yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. two months from now, you can't earn points. And it's still the beginning of July as far as I'm okay. concerned. And that's going to be fun. But for now, we have a uh, pretty much a mid-range hunter versus what appears to be a um, a patron warrior. Unless it's a control warrior of, like, inner rage tech and, like, blue horror tech. I don't think so. But um, it seems like Strife Curl did um, choose to put Snake Trap in this Hunter, and that's not going to be too effective against a Patron Warrior. It might even backfire in some cases. But uh, he's going to choose and go ahead with the more uh, Sticky Minion, and that's going to be really, really good, because Nyria does have a Fire War Axe, and uh, he can't really use that to clear the Minion. Yeah, it's interesting. Why why are people putting in Snake Traps in Moz? I know you've played a bunch of mid-range Hunters, so what, what are some of the advantages in the metagame to bring out the Snake Trap? Mm. So the first advantage is that uh, people don't know about it uh, and people usually just hit the minions first anyways um, in preparation for like explosive, right? So when they do, you actually put a lot of power on the board and it's pretty much a two mana muster for battle if you may. It actually pushes more damage than most of the other cards. But the problem with Snake Trap is that once it's revealed in like the first round of the tournament, um, you know, you kind of like people already know that you're playing Snake Trap, right? So um, in formats where you cannot change your decks, uh, Snake Trap is not really that good. But in formats that you can change your decks, uh, Snake Trap is actually, you know, pretty useful in some certain cases. Oh my! Shield Slam on the <laughs> Mad Scientist taking this threat very seriously, considering his hand is pretty awkward. You know, two inner rages and two weapons, which he won't be able to get out in time. I was. Anticipating actually being able to use a weapon, but he really wants to set up Death Spite for next turn, I assume, so that way he can get the Whirlwind clears. 
Yeah, and it seems like it, it's not gonna be a- It's probably a freezing trap that popped out because the snake shot was still glowing. So now, um, we'll see if Strepto's running two snakes, and no, it's not. It's two freezing and one snake. So that mass scientist actually got zero value. Um... So what you're scared of here as Strife Crow is, uh, of course, your next turn, which is going to be like Patron usually, <laughs> like Patron into the Desperate, it's really, really, like, kind of like a move you see all the time. Yeah, that's assuming he has it though. He has Brawl, which is an interesting inclusion as well. I know his teammate, Savitz, was thinking about Brawl for a while. Um, and including it, so that way, not only are you, you know, able to de deal with boards that are really big against you, but also being able to win, like, the Mirror, for example, um, if they're putting a lot of Grim Patrons out. Do you like Brawl in the Patron deck? I think the motivation for putting in Brawl is that you see a lot of Patron decks do nothing in, like, turn 8, right? Turn 8, hero power pass, because they're waiting for the combo pieces to, like, actually blow up their opponent. So Brawl, in that case, is actually pretty strong, right? You actually have a very good chance against Handlock now. Um, you know, some, some matchups actually more improved, which Patron doesn't really have a lot of bad matchups, but um, it's pretty interesting. But of course, if you play Brawl, you have to be cutting something else, and they're probably your cycle cards. So, like, you could probably cover Gnomish, you probably cut a Slam for it. There's um, advantages and disadvantages. Ah, interesting. So he sets up a Mukla here um, and gets the Snake Trap out of the way. So Because he knows that what you usually want to do is utilize that banana so that way it trades well. And Irea tests immediately, very astutely, uses the weapon, recognizing okay. that uh, it's probably going to be the case where he needs to use his uh, weapon to p test for Explosive Trap. Instead, it's going to be Snake Trap. So he drops his Emperor, makes everything a lot cheaper. He's going to let his opponent try to deal with the trades because the Hunter does not want to leave Emperor Thoris in more than one turn on the board here. Yeah, that's right. And of course, uh, the zero mana bananas might come in handy later. I'm not sure. But running two shield blocks against Hunters is actually a very good tech choice because, like as we know, the only two classes that kind of beat Patron or kind of have a chance against Patron is Midrange Hunter and Handlock, right? Everything else is kind of uh. So with Nairia's plan, with the Brawl and the Shield Block inclusions, is to have a better matchup against those classes, but then have a weaker classes against the ones that he's... Patron is already good. So that's the plan, at least. Alright, well, Snake Trap is revealed, and the Brawl will commence here. Ideally, uh, the 1-1 one -one would survive, so that way you can easily pick it off. But another interesting inclusion is this Raging Worgen from Nyria. Oh, man. And it's starting to look more like maybe the OTK warrior yeah. than uh, the warrior that we come to expect with the Grim Patron. It, it, maybe you could have a little bit of both, but generally speaking, I know Nyria really loved this type of deck back in the day. Oh, man. And I don't know. Like... Worgen, Worgen OTK Warrior decks are just the coolest, right? So, um, I'm actually rooting for Naria to win here. Uh, you can't even be mad if you die to a Raging Worgen. You just can't be mad. Yeah, you can't be too mad. You can't be too mad. Um, just because it's pretty cool and novel, but I think you're still, like, upset because you're thinking, man, Warsong Commander is just ridiculous. Yeah. And you'd be absolutely right. Yeah, perfect shield slam off the top here. And uh, once again, set up the dust fight to proc the Acolyte one more time. All you need to do in this deck is just to find the charge for the 8 Raging Warrior. And it's, it's actual charge, right? Not the Warsong Commander charge, but the card charge. Right. Um, yeah, that's all you want to see. If he has charge, that's uh, 3 plus 2 plus 4. So that's uh, 9 times 2. It's 18 damage. Plus the, plus plus the, the dust fight. Well, plus the oh. one on the organ itself too, right? right? And oh, whoa! There it is. <laughs> Bro, I, think, I think that's <laughs> the floor. That's it. That's it. Yep. It's There's crazy. no way. Even oh. has two bananas. I forgot about that. Add yeah. that to the damage count. Wow. It'd be and really funny if uh, he got like two ahead of the BM, <laughs> and then <laughs> whirlwind just, with the death right. fight. Oh, yeah, <laughs> lose the rating. Oh. Yeah, let's not do that. Yeah. This is this is. Fun. And yeah, this this deck wins. So unfortunately, we're not gonna see this deck again, right? Um, that's that's the sad part, is that we don't see this again. I mean, Nyria is bringing pretty cool stuff. Last week, he brought uh, Death Star's really weird Death Lord Hunter. Um, right. Oh yeah, yeah. Starting to make a little bit of waves. He just he's really using this format to experiment with the fact that it's group stage, being a little hard to predict. Uh, you see, Loot Hoarder. 
you see the, uh, you know, you might see inner rages, you might see other stuff, and then all of a sudden he whips out the Worgen. So I, I like that mix up there. It's very strong to bring it as a one off compared to a full weekend tournament where you have to play 10 to 12 series of the same deck. Mm -hmm. And seeing that, seems like Nyria favors more of the combo rampy deck um, so because we see another freeze mage here. And freeze mage is kind of like the Worgen um, deck just now, it kind of stalls it out. And uh, Strife Coat, uh, Midrange Hunter seems like it seems pretty bad against the Mage, like a Freeze Mage, but uh, unfortunately it does have Lothab, so it's not like uh, it's not gonna be a steamroll from Nyria. Yeah, not, not exactly, um, because the Midrange Hunter has a lot of explosive damage. Um, and the face hunter is rather predictable. You know, they they usually have damage that just tries to go to face, and they have weak minions that you can pick off. But cards like high main are still really hard to deal with, even for a class that's well equipped at dealing with threats like freeze mage. Hmm. Okay. Well, I actually think that mid range hunter has a very very uh, predictable damage. They don't really have explosive damage, in my opinion, because they play a lot of like you know minions as well. They have a lot of traps and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's definitely like like a freeze mage favorite here. Uh, Strife Girl, pretty unlucky to draw mad sciences and two traps. Kind of reminds me of that fireback game in uh, in uh, what's that called in Via game? Uh yeah, it just happens pretty often when you have mad scientists line up improperly. It just it feels like the worst thing ever. Yeah, is that one mad um, scientist balanced? By the way, do I think mad scientist is balanced? Yeah, is that why it's balanced? Because sometimes you just, you know, draw a trap. Oh, is that like, why it's balanced? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I mean, I don't know if you're trying, to, you're trying to bait me here, Moz, because if so, you're doing a great job. Um, but I, I don't know. Like, Mad Scientist, it's still, like, two damage per turn that you have to acknowledge here. And right. the thing about what you were saying, too, is even though Freeze Mage is well-equipped to deal with threats and you can predict the damage, the fact is Hunter is still Hunter, and it's still putting out damage consistently... That's and if true. you don't have the threats, like, if you can't answer the board with a Doomsayer play or a Flame Strike or something to clear it, then they're just going to be pushing in huge damage. And they'll kill you just as fast as, like, a, a Face Hunter sometimes, like, turn 7 or 8 if you can't answer the damage. Yeah, sure, I can get, I can get behind that. Makes sense. <laughs> Seeing the Mass Scientist play again, even the 4-man Mass Scientist is really good for Mage, right? You pull a 3-mana Secret. So it's effectively like a one mana two two in a sense. Yeah. Like really good. But yeah, Hellmaster's draw is gonna be perfect here. Just to uh push for more damage. Does he wanna protect the the river croc or just push damage at all? Uh, I guess you're not really protecting it from anything, right? Frostbolt maybe? Yeah. Just rush right. it. Yeah, you just wanna put damage on the place. If he's gonna frost if he's gonna frostbolt your four three. You have two four threes, so it doesn't matter. Um, mm -hmm. You might as well just give one up. Oh, that, um, that Thanos is actually very annoying because a Blizzard would wipe everything off the board outside of the high main if it comes down here. Yeah. Because it does three damage AOE instead. Yeah, and of course, if you do play the high main, you cannot kill the Thanos. If you kill the Thanos, right. you can't put a minion. So, very good play by Naria there. Uh, Strefko is going to opt to kill this off. Oh! No! Smork it, I guess. You can do 8 damage, put his opponent at 11. Yeah, probably. And I think I, what I like about using the weapon here is that... Oh wait, he has it's Ice Barrier. That's what I was about to say. I, what I like about it is that if he knows it's not Ice Barrier, then he can start getting the damage to the weapon now, and then use Kill Command to threaten to get past Ice Barrier if it comes up. But uh, my mistake, I thought that was Ice Block. Mm. Mm, okay. Uh, well, this is a beautiful Blizzard. We'll take one of those. And uh, we're probably going to see Nyria not attack here because it gives your opponent extra charge. Don't want to do that. Yeah, there's no incentive um, to bounce it back, give an extra charge, and you know lose the spell power that you could also capitalize on the board. Mm hmm. Not the worst of draws. Yeah, he's got ways to stall this high main too. So he can set up the mad scientist so that way he can guaranteed activate. You're gonna need that ice block sooner or later, or even the ice barrier. I wonder 
Yeah, but what do you do with your main mana? Probably just like Frostbolt this high main in preparation for like a ping blizzard. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Also heals you for six, effectively. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, ooh. okay. That happened. So uh, if I he's think... playing... Yeah, Fireball, he's going to use the Mad Scientist challenge here. I think I really shook his head a little bit there. I don't think uh, he wanted that to happen. Yeah, now this is more... This is a lot of damage for Strife Crow. He's got six on the bow, four here, and then the hero power is 12, 17 from kill command uh, over two turns. Yeah. So he's just missing a little bit more. Hmm. It's kind of scary. Especially if, like, uh, well, basically, now we're still only one more secret, right? And both of the secrets kind of do the same thing, where it just stalls for, like, that one extra thing. Uh, yeah, Nairia attacking, basically, he quick shot at himself in a sense. Uh, Strife Crow here, I guess you just want to develop more stuff um, to the point where you don't get AoE'd down too easily, and that's basically the 2 8 that we see right now. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, my ex -na is not that threatening just by herself, but she still keeps adding in a little bit of damage, which is what's starting to happen here, and the mid range hunter is really pressing in. Mm -hmm. And there's no point in trading because Nairi is going to trade. Oh wow, going for the Mass Scientist's attack, rallying their minions more. That's an interesting play. Yeah, that really is, isn't it? Alright, well you can develop Thanos and Frost Nova stall one more time. You also have Blizzard um, as an option here. It is more expensive, kind of. I mean, you can put the Thanos out there, which is important not just for... Uh, yeah, the, the spell damage, but you might want to consider a draw opportunities as well. Your hand's looking, it's, it's looking very reactive, and you need to find ways to uh, be able to win the game as much as it's cool to survive. Yeah, you still need to win somehow. So Alex Straza would be a very good draw, whether you heal yourself or you're, and you burst your opponent down. So that's pretty much the card that uh, Nairi really wants to see. Shif Crow is thinking about where to attack the bow, just in case he draws another one next turn. Seems yeah. like he just needs to hold it. Also, Ice Barrier or something in the mind too. It's um, you, you attack with the bow, so that way, if you draw, if you put the Ice Barrier, you can just kind of use the Kill Command to loom closer down and don't have to activate it. Oh yeah, that's actually no, well, that's actually really good. Yeah, it makes sense. Then attacking is really good here. Plus, how are you going to get an extra charge off the bow with Snake Trap? It's like, he's not going to play a Charger. <laughs> oh wait, it is another Ice Barrier! Okay. Ah, we forgot the Mad Scientist activated. I keep thinking yeah. it's Ice Block. My apologies. But then it does make sense, because there was actually a bigger chance that it was Ice Block. Mm -hmm. So it was good to know. Emperor plus Nova seems pretty decent. Yeah, there is a Silence available. Um... Silence into... Yeah, you can't kill it. Yeah, Strife can't kill yet. Yeah. Ooh. Well, now Snake Trap can be live, so you can silence... Uh, hmm. That's, <laughs> that's 9, 11 damage this turn. You can silence the Mexina and the Houndmaster Mexina. If one juggle hits the Emperor, you can kill it off like that way, but then you're so vulnerable to, vulnerable to like a Flame Strike. So then would you kill Command? If you kill command it, then I guess your follow up is the Hellmaster, the Magna, so it's a bit more AOE proof. So I mm -hmm. guess so. Like you really want the kill command, right? But I guess in this situation yeah. you kinda have to use it. Is it is it is it okay to play really defensive at all? I don't really know about that either. Like just play really passive. I think I think being aggressive is definitely the better play here. Well, I think either ways, like either line you do aggressive or defensive, you have to kill the Emperor, right? So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's definitely what uh, Strife Goat did. And of course, the Master has 7 health, so pretty AoE proof, I would say. There's the Ice Block. But Ice Block, of course, is very weak against Hunters. When they get you down to like really low health, they you're still at very low health. So Flame Strike it is. Yeah, Ice Block doesn't stop the overarching problem of Hunter's consistent damage. 
Right. Freeze Mage tries to stall out the game, but Hunter puts you on a clock. Oh, That's Lothab a rather drawn. Rather powerful draw, but the thing is, the timing of Lothab is also not optimal, considering that you want to set up Lothab for like a kill next turn or an ice block pop, and he doesn't have either. Yeah, not at the moment. I guess the Lothab, just a Lothab here, is kind of scary because it's going to deal 5 damage. So now we're just going to remove it off the board. Seeing that Strefko is holding onto that card for ages, doesn't know what it is, but it's right. probably an unplayable card. Ooh, it's the Huffer. That's some Always. more damage. <laughs> Always Huffer. I, I'm honest, I think you should start tracking your own Huffers too. Oh, if yeah, I do get a lot of Huffers. Yeah. You get a lot of Huffers? Yeah, even when when times I don't really want to huffer, I still get it. So mm -hmm. sometimes it gets yeah, it's cool, I guess. Four two charge for three mana. It's fair. It's like a strictly better arcane golem, right? <laughs> pretty much, yes. And uh, ice lance here is actually pretty good because once again, when you're when the hunter reduces their down to one or two health, you're not healing it back. Ooh, or so you think until he draws, unleash the hounds with iron beak owl and be able yeah. to. Pop the ice block. That is actually the uh, the well, quote unquote, lethal there on the ice block. So I guess you yeah. would just do it. He knows no more ice barrier, and the challenge is that now that if, if his opponent even had Alex Straza and the follow up burn, he'd have to use it on himself or have the second ice block and do something else to survive the damage, which he can't. Yeah. Pretty um, much. It's moments like this in which Freeze Mages actually really value things like the Antique Heal Bot because they can't really squeeze in all of that and then reliably heal up. Not in this case, though. Yeah, uh, looks like Nairiyush is dead. Well, he has a chance to draw a, um, a, a an Alexstrasza here after sacrificing oh, his, you're right. Right. his Acolyte. So a little bit of a chance. He could also draw his second Ice Block. So if he misses with the Acolyte here, he can just ping his own Acolyte again for the second Ice Block and hope for like an Alex Strasser there. So a little bit of outs, but it's looking pretty grim at least. Okay. If he draws Alex Strasser... Oh wait, he's moving before uh, he ends up seeing the draw. Okay. I guess so now it is the Ice Block. Ice Block is his last chance. Is there any opportunity other than that though? No. Antique Kill Ball doesn't do it. Frost Nova doesn't do it. So no. Okay. Okay. Well, Strefko gets on the board, and uh, both of these players are 1-1. One -one. Yeah, the mid-range Hunter's pressure, it took a little bit longer to set up, because uh, Strefko had, you know, his traps and scientists in hand, so it wasn't exactly the best draw for him. But uh, Nairia also had really awkward draws as well. He wasn't really hitting too much of his card draw, he was hitting a lot of his stall. Like, he had, I think, three out of the four freezes in his deck, mm -hmm. and, um, and a lot of burn, that's about it. Yeah, it might have came down to Nairia attacking with the Thalnos and giving giving Strike with extra three damage, and then you know the turns kind of shifted. Uh, yeah. that might have been the play that gave Strike the win, but who knows? Uh, they both played overall pretty well. I mean, Nairia did notice, did did recognize that you do need to remove the minions uh, off uh, Strike Girl. Just you know, they, they usually run out of minions because they don't have any draw power. But now we're going to see the Freeze Mage sure. again versus the, uh, what looks like a Handlock, but might be Malago's Warlock as well. Uh, who knows? But the Farseer is going to be mm. pretty helpful, actually, in this matchup. Yeah, it's interesting to me, too, considering that Farseer has been a card that's been rotated out of Handlock um, recently, and I, I haven't seen it be put in back. Um, so I guess Nairia is really teching it against the aggressive decks because then it's really helpful so you can stabilize some of the health. Not to mention that sometimes just tempo on the board to heal back a minion to higher health is really powerful for Handlock as well. Yeah, I think the only reason to get a Farseer over anti heal bot is the option to heal the minions, right? You want to trade for something, yeah. heal your Twilight Drake back. It's actually a very insane card when it actually works. And, uh, and there it is. <laughs> yeah, he heard us call his name. Mm -hmm. Now that's a pretty good draw for Naria. That's excellent. It's almost as good as it gets. Even better than Acolyte, because their Acolyte could get answered pretty easily. Yep. Okay, so it looks like it's the Mali Ghost version. This is something that Naria was the primary pioneer for this deck and archetype. People were looking for ways to make Warlock even more annoying to play against. <laughs> and Nairia was like, well, let me help. 
So why don't we just create yet another thing that you have to consider when playing against Warlock, which makes it to the count to, I believe, four. Yeah, lots of Warlock versions out there. Same as Mage, I guess, but I think more Warlock versions are being played than Mages. Like, sure, you can play duplicates, a giant Mage, but who really does that, right? Yeah, Mech um, Mage is kind of phased out, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, I actually think that the Malagos uh, Warlock is kind of a favorite against Freeze Mage. Like, you do not have those 8-8s to pressure your opponent really, really hard. So, Strife Ghost uh, board right now is actually as good as it gets as a Malagos Warlock, right? You only have two um, uh, Twilight Drakes as the 4-drops, and getting them is so important because they push a lot of damage. Yeah, true that. One thing that is beneficial, though, is that if you can gather the damage and the time, you can start burning the Freeze Mage from the hand, which is something that a lot of decks don't do. They they have the damage on the board, right? That's why decks like Zoo, for example, struggle so much against Freeze Mage generally, because you have to go through the ice barriers, but you also build up your board to the point where it gets frozen. So that's something that is going in the favor of Strife Crow. If he can ever get that pressure point, he has so many ways to damage from the hand, considering that there's a lot of burn. And, um, you know, even cards like Blackwing Corruptor, those things are really impactful too. Significant amount of pressure coming out. Yeah, it feels that way. So, like, Blackwing Corruptor is going to come out, like you said. Thinking whether to push one extra damage and, like, you know, Argus hitting that instead. I think that would be fine. Doesn't really matter. But I guess he's killing the Thanos yeah. here. Yeah, killing the Thanos seems to be the better um, compromise. That's an ice barrier drawn, right? Okay. Yeah. So I was just kind of confused by that. So he <laughs> he just popped the ice barrier and he drew another one. Yep. Hmm. He's really tempted to play Frost Nova Doomsayer, right? Well, yeah. I mean, that's a good play. It's not like tempted or anything, but like, yeah, it's a good play, right? You want to stop your opponent from developing more creatures and answer with it yeah. immediately. You um, do have Flame Strike the following turn. It wouldn't kill off the Azure Drake, but it's important to note that most Mali Ghost Handlock decks only have one Defender of Argus, usually. Oh! Oh! That yeah, I wasn't, is, I wasn't um, expecting that. That is really creative. Now, is Strike scared of like a lot of burst damage next turn? How do you do 17 damage at 7 mana? Is well, even, maybe not even 7 mana, but he's got stall next turn. Well, he's got flame strike next turn. He's got stall the following turn, and he can, like, so he has 17 damage of burn, right? He's got frostbolt, ice lance, and pyroblast. So if he can oh, make it to turn okay. 10, he hypothetically can kill him. But he knows that there's a lot of heal in the deck, too. Oh, that's that was interesting. The thing is, Nyria knows this deck very well, so, so he's probably saying that I'm going to try to limit your taps so that you can't tap into a bunch of answers, and you have to have heal now, or you have to be able to kill me before I can do anything back to you. And nyria has got plenty of ways to stall. He's even got heal in his hand with a nice bear and an antique heal by. He's working with a lot of HP. Okay. Uh, Strike with Jay. Gonna counter that YOLO fireball with... Uh... <laughs> Play a Farseer, develop for a little bit more, yeah. and I guess the flame shark is happening here. Yeah, the only thing that I don't like about that play from Nyria, I actually like a lot of things about it, but if I were to be very nitpicky, the one thing that I would, uh, that Frost Nova draw was actually pretty nice too. But if I were to be nitpicky though, I would have to say that it's telegraphs a little bit too early when the wind condition hasn't exactly been fully mapped out. You don't, you don't, you don't have enough information about your opponent's hand considering that he's been playing generally on curve to be able to make that assumption. But I think that's still I think that's still reasonable and not to mention that's a really flashy play. And I'm always I'm always down for the flashy plays of Moz. They're pretty cool. Okay. Well, as long as you, you know, win the whole tournament, do as many flashy plays as you want, right? Um, oh yeah. Yeah. I so. mean this is what makes Nairi a pretty exciting player to me, because he's able to spot some really weird scenarios like this. And it looks like it's gonna work out, to be honest. I mean yeah. He's got a lot of damage. He's got another Frost Nova install. And he can start putting out the damage to the point where even if his opponent heals a little bit more with another Farseer, he's good. And it's, uh, Naria is actually setting the Flame Strike up really, really well, right? Just uh, 
pain the Twilight Drake every single turn he has, so they reduce it down to five health. And next turn he actually has a board, full board clear. Well, I mean the flame, the in game boss is gonna spawn a one one, but like, mm. what is a one one gonna do to you anyways? Um, yeah. Strife Girl, on the other hand, really getting pressured quite a bit. Like he's getting stalled so much that he believes maybe that he needs the anti heal bot to kind of stay in the game or something. Yeah, he doesn't have it though. He doesn't have any source of heal. So many And it really is just anti heal bot, right? Outside of that far seer. No one is running um siphon souls, I feel like, in their in their deck, are they? Yeah, I feel like they aren't. Like BG is just, just like a and siphon soul anyway. Surely no one's running like other unconventional heals like Sacrificial Pact and Alex Straza. I'd be very surprised to see either of those in this melee was dead. Yeah, me too. And, I mean, it kind of makes sense if you played Alex Straza, where it's like, well, I'm just going to Alex you down to 15 and Mally goes you, but it still feels very greedy. So, Shrevko taps, and with that tap, does that mean certain death? Because like, I now mean... He, mm. I, I mean, yeah, but at the same time, you really want to dig deeper to your uh, antique heal body, right? So Nairi has so much damage in his hand. He actually has 14. Well, 15 with the ping, right? So he's actually one damage off lethal just now, right? Yeah, next turn. But he also has Pyroblast the following turn. Oh, Emperor. So my assumption is that he will play... Oh, my Emperor Thorson being drawn. Drop yeah, though. but not that good, right? No, not that good. Alright, so Nairi just needs to find one more burn spell. And the only burn spell left in the deck is Fireball. No, no, Nairi can just Pyroblast the face next turn. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, but if he wants to win this turn, he needs to find, like, the Fireball. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Or, you already used Thanos? Okay, like, the, 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 the thing is, like, if you Pyroblast this turn, you're dead. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, he doesn't have dead. Ice Block. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so that, that's another thing, too, that um, we were considering, that the Emperor Thorson is really impactful because he has Mally Ghost in the hand. What to do, yeah. what to do, what to do. Um, well, this is awkward. <laughs> yeah, the Emperor Thorson actually changed a lot. So, hmm. Ooh, Stall tactics. Health, I guess. Doomsayer. Yeah. And Frostbolt Ice Lands the face. No. <laughs> no, not going for that, man. Oh, going for the ping. Yeah, yeah, this is a lethal too, right? But now, Strikko has a lot of damage. 9 plus 14. Is not quite enough though. <laughs> and Strife Crow doesn't have a heal either, so that's awkward. Hmm. Do you tap here just to find that heal? So many I mean, he's been communicated so much about uh, what his opponent's been doing fireballing the face, pinging the face when there's an obvious 1 1 ping there. Yeah. Oh man, if Strefko doesn't find a heal here, he's dead. Well, he can't anymore. He just played the Blackwing Corruptor, which means it denies him the ability to tap. Yeah. That's it then. Oh. All right. Well, Nyria sets up some really cool win scenarios here. Uh, barring a catastrophe of bad sequencing, like if he rushed and ice lands first. I've seen that, that type of mistake where you go a little too, too quickly. Yeah. Wow. Manages to squeeze out this win. That's pretty interesting. Like the way Nairia played. Yeah, I, I I dare say that's you know pretty impressive just because of yeah. the way it panned out. Wait, was you one off? No 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 no. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, because the hero power has been exhausted for a while, so. Uh, that wraps up the game here. And Naria goes and takes the series 2-1, which means he's 3-0 in the current deck masters league, uh, which means he is guaranteed at least to go to the playoffs. And I believe from that point, he'll be playing for seeding. Shrifeco is at least guaranteed for the wild card spot, um, but he'll also have one more match in the group to make sure to determine if uh, he can continue to go on or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good match. I, I, I enjoyed that match. Can't wait for the next one. All right, so uh, that's in Group D. We're going to stay on Group D for another best of three. We have Brian Kibler versus Toyda from Fade to Karma. That's the new team that Cypher was on, and maybe Toyda can continue that momentum. Following that match, we have Gar versus Trump and Forsen versus Stilo from Groups A and C. So don't go anywhere, guys. Uh, we're 
going to be approaching the midway point soon of the day. So when we come back, we're going to continue more action here in week three of the Vulcan Deckmasters. <laughs> 